the studio will rename you. And uh, and on top of that, February twenty first, two thousand six, was officially named Rich Franklin Day in yeah. in Cincinnati. Is that something that you get to celebrate every year? Or is that just like a one time thing? I, I think it was a one time thing. And huh. I, if I if I if I celebrated it every year, I'm not sure exactly. Um, what I would do. <laughs> I mean, you should be able to have run of the city and be able to do whatever the hell you want. I On think Rich that's Franklin your, day. Yeah, Rich Franklin Day. It's your day. You should be able to do whatever yeah, you want. I, they, I didn't get a key or anything like that. I got a, I got a uh, like a little proclamation or something, but no key to the city or anything. Oh, that's BS, man. They should have given you a key. You know, I see that stuff on TV all the time, like in movies and all that, and I, I, I want a key to a city. Yeah, one of my goals in life is to get a key to the city. In fact, uh, Mayor Pam Iorio of, of Tampa, I was close to getting a key to the city. I, I, I met with her one time. I go, hey, if I do three good deeds on the radio, like three great things that help people out, big, big time, can I get a key? And she was real close to saying, yeah. She goes, actually, let's talk about that. I was like, perfect. So believe me, if we can get this show to get a key to the city oh, and make it an official Bubba the Love Sponge Day... <laughs> You know how great that would be? That would be the best. Like, having a key to a city, what exactly does the, the, I mean, what privilege does that It's just have? cool. Like, there's nothing, yeah. it, it, it just, it's just bragging rights. It's just yeah. cool. It's like, yeah. what have you done? Oh, yeah, well, I got a key to the city. And it's, yeah, that, exactly. The conversation ends right there. I mean, Exactly. You know. Exactly. Where's your key? Right, right. <laughs> you know? Right, and, and if you have a key to the city, you should be able to call the mayor up at any time and get a hold of them and... Shoot the breeze uh, if you want. Yeah, you, like you have the red, like Commissioner Gordon phone. <laughs> right, yeah, right. The, the bat phone with the, with, with the red. Exactly. Direct, a direct line. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I agree. I like the way you think, Rich. And, um, you know, Rich, again, uh, you know, next up for you, you're not quite sure. You've got one fight left on the deal. You're going out to Vegas to renegotiate and make millions. And, um, you know, of course, uh, your sponsors, you got American Fighter. Who else is sponsoring you that's, uh, that's big right now? Um, for this fight, uh, it was nice the way it worked out. I had exclusive sponsor on my shirt was uh, Silver Star. Um, we did American Fighter co-branded with Silver Star. Mm -hmm. and I, the walkout shirts this time were the coolest walkout shirts I've had. I mean, it, I really like the way they look. They they look like something I would stylistically wear out like on a Friday night rather than just a, a sponsor shirt that you would wear to a fight. And then um, Ring Star had the exclusive sponsorship on my shorts, and Ring Star is actually we have a shoe deal with them. That we're we're making shoes and stuff, and I I had some uh, American Fighter flip flops that I just uh, I love that Ring Star made and stuff like that. So now, it sound like cheesy plugs, but that's the god's honest truth. No, 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 no. RichFranklin dot com. Can yeah. they get everything there? Do what? Oh yeah, you can always get everything either there or at. Uh, at uh, AmericanFighter.com, one of the two. Now, Rich, a lot of people under underestimate the value of like that walkout shirt and things like that. I mean, this is garnering big money now. Uh, you know, the the boxers and, and the boxers made so much money for such a long time um, with with that sort of thing. And Dana, it seems, has been pretty cool. I mean, she, he's had some problem with you know like affliction and things like that, where he doesn't want that brand being sported anymore, which is completely understandable. I get his side of the argument, but you know, these days, what is a a walkout shirt sponsorship going for roughly? If you're um, if you're a high profile guy, uh, you know, I mean, it could go. It depends. I mean, you know, you have exclusive sponsorships, or you can do. You can break it down. It's kind of like a, the NASCAR theory, where somebody buys like a, a sleeve, and, a, and mm -hmm. you know, somebody buys like a, one logo on the shirt, and you have like size stipulations and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, you know, some some guys are making upwards of if you hustle, you know, just on their shirt alone, uh, possibly uh, maybe up to forty or fifty grand on the shirt. Yeah, nice. and, and you know what? And there's some fighters that you wouldn't think. That make that kind of money on the shirt that do because they I, I know a guy that manages a lot of fighters and he manages a lot of names that you would know, and he works out a deal on how many impressions he gets as to how much the sponsors pay, and he ends up making more money for his guys. Yeah. Now when's when's it going to be like uh, like NASCAR as you said? When's it going to be like NASCAR where like there's just absolutely no room left on the shorts at all and you can't even see thread? Has Dana put his his foot down and said, okay guys, let's keep it to Let's keep it to three patches or, or one sponsor. What's the rules on that? Or can you just sell the crap out of your shorts if you want? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think they care, really. Well, here, um, I've been involved they, in this process, so I can answer a little bit better. What? Yeah, they, um, I don't think the UFC personally cares about the T-shirts or the uh, shorts as far as the number of sponsors go. They, I mean, they care about some of the certain sponsors that you would put on the, uh, the T-shirts. They have restrictions on that, like I couldn't. I couldn't go get a tobacco or an alcohol sponsor because they right. have exclusive tobacco and alcohol sponsors. But they, uh, they they don't care about how many, really. Now, on the banners, the banners are a different story because on the banners that you see the fighters drop behind them, yeah. um, 
that the UFC, the only stipulation that they have, other than, I mean, they have stipulations on certain sponsors, again, just like the shorts and stuff, but the only stipulation that they have on the banner is that you have to save space for the UFC stuff, the UFC logo to go on top. But prior to the fight, we have to send our shorts in, or, well, we have to send a list of our sponsors in for approval, like, uh, weeks out of the fight. And then once they get approved, even when we come to show up for, like, like on the weigh-in day, we have to check our weight with the UFC that morning. They want to record it so they know, so they can foresee any problems as to people not making weight or whatnot. And when we go down there in the morning to check our weight, uh, they they check our shorts and our banners, gotcha. make sure that, that that what we sent in is on the banner and that everything is approved. So they're double checking all that stuff as much as possible. Rich Franklin on the phone with us right now, and you know, along the, another, I'm, I'm sorry, I keep harping on the sponsorship thing. One thing I've noticed: the UFC ring um, just keeps getting more and more sponsors in there, and more and more logos, and it's not quite the same material, right? I mean, those those um, sponsorship logos inside the octagon are not the same material as the actual canvas. So it's a little bit more of a slippery surface, isn't it? Well, actually... Um, or do they change you watch, that? If you watch a lot of my fights, the, uh, the, the logos are the grippiest part of the, uh, of the canvas. But wouldn't that they, make they, them also uh, susceptible to, to sweat a little bit more and slipping? No, I, 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 it, it doesn't matter to me. You watch my fights, you'll see me when I'm in, the, in my fights. I fight for the center of the ring all the time just because... I have the, the best footing on that on that canvas, and I feel more comfortable there. I hate getting on the outskirts of the canvas because the uh, the footing just is not as good. Against you, um, against you, Shinokami, you did a beautiful job of that. A beautiful yeah, job it, of keeping him in the middle and using that front leg kick. I mean, that was just beautiful strategy in that fight. Thank you. I appreciate that. I never get uh, compliments on the Okami fight ever, except <laughs> for, man, I don't know how you got out of that uh <laughs> Well, the first the first two rounds, you were killing him on his front leg, and your move your movement in the ring was just it was just perfect. You executed a good game plan there. Thank you. I love I love how honest Rich is, man. If he tell if, if he sucked in a fight, he'll tell you he sucks. If he if he kicked ass, well, yeah, I did all right. I kicked ass. But that one, he had a very you could tell he had a very specific technical game plan that he followed the the first two rounds, and it it, it, it ended up winning the fight for him. Yeah, right. I, well, here's the funny thing. At the end of the, the second round, you know, I do not like letting fights go to decision. I really don't. I've uh, I worked diligently to, to keep fights from going to decisions and all that kind of stuff. And at the end of the second round of the Okami fight, I walk in, I, I go back to my cornerman, and they're telling me, yeah, good job, you're winning the fight, and this and that. And I said, and I said to him, I said, I don't, I, I'm not going to be able to knock him out. Like, I couldn't land a flush punch because he was kind of, he, he was kind of running as, as we were fighting in a sense. And so I said, I think I'm going to take him down. And my cornerman, they looked there like, what? <laughs> and uh, and I said, yeah, I think I'm going to take him down. And they're like, listen, you stick to the game plan and this and that. And so in the third round, I go out there, and then he and I clinch like in an over-under clinch. And I was in the clinch, and I was like, yeah, I'll just kind of relax here. And and uh, whatever happens, happens. And then he hit me with that, that uh, leg sweep. And, uh, and I hit the ground. I was like, I cannot believe I let this just happen. <laughs> and uh, I was and, worried and, at the end for you. Yeah, well, and then I was mounted. I had to fight my way out of that and fight and fight my way out of that the the key lock that he had me in and everything. It was yep. just it was crazy. And I went back to my corner and they're just, they're kind of shaking their head and looking at me like, "See, that's what happens when you get to messing around." Well, Rich, I'll tell you what, man, a great fight once again. Congratulations on the win against uh, Vanderlei Silva. Whatever's up next for you, man. Hopefully, uh, you give us a jingle. We'll talk about it and promote it. And of course, richfranklin.com. You can find everything you need. And uh, Rich, seriously, consider that offer about us renaming you. I'm not saying it's a crappy nickname, but I'm not saying it's you know it, it could be better. Let's put it that way. Deal. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Your, your listeners have heard. So uh, let's let's see what kind of response we get to all this kind of stuff. And uh, and if we come we'll up with it from there. Yeah. And let's say we come up with like five really strong ones that we feel will work for you. Would you be into the possibly renaming you? Uh, the, the possibility of it, absolutely. Sweet. I mean, like, I, I, I didn't choose my nickname to begin with. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not bent on that one or anything. So, yeah, I'm, I'm game. Well, if anybody can choose a good nickname, it's the Bubba Army. Trust me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rich. Hey, man. Uh, good I, talking I have, to you. I, in, in the Bubba Army, I trust. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you have it. Hey, Rich. Uh, thanks again, bro. Appreciate you giving us a holler, and uh, we'll talk to you soon, dude. All right. Thank you, guys, man. Later, man. Later.